There's parts of six suits of armour. There's large bundles of spears that have broken off their shafts. There's tools and personal possessions. And what we think is it was a soldier who buried it. We know it was buried around kind of the second quarter, the second century. And what we think is it's a soldier who, in his secondary job, is an armourer. And he's packed these things up, presumably because he's going off somewhere. Um, it's not in a hurry because the things are absolutely amazingly well packed, they're wrapped up. Presumably he's just been sent off and he thinks he's coming back, otherwise he'd take it with him. Whereas I think Corbridge, the fort, was a place of orders, loyalty, structure. What I like about the Corbridge Horde is that it indicates a certain amount of individuality. Here is a man who, is, who has hopes, he has hope to return. He is making plans beyond what his immediate orders are. The most famous and really the most important part of the Corbridge Horde is all of the armour, all this Lorica segmentata, so it's these curved segments. And before it was found in 1964, archaeologists knew the Romans had this type of armour, but only small fragments had been found, so they didn't understand how you put it on, how it was made, how it was repaired, and how you wore it in battle. But because so much was found, and because the organic preservation allowed them to see the leather straps which held the segments together, and it was the first time anybody was able to reconstruct a suit of this armour. And now, if people find Lorica segmentata, it gets classified according to the three Corbridge types. Here is an individual, presumably a soldier, who is, yes, he's, he's got a job, he's a blacksmith, and he's probably very good and very diligent at that job, but he also has a social life as well. There's writing equipment. Perhaps he wrote to members of his family, um, perhaps still living at where he was posted previously. And there's also a tankard, um, and it's quite a large tankard, which leads me to conclude that he probably had quite a lively social life. The Corbridge Horde really is phenomenally important. You know, it's among the most important finds in terms of Roman military history in the empire. It gave archaeologists so much information on this really key piece of equipment that was, you know, vital to the empire expanding and its soldiers being protected. The question I'd really like to answer is why the owner of the Horde never came back to retrieve it. We're in the realms of speculation here, but we might imagine that he marched off to war and never came back, or else he was probably posted to somewhere else uh, in the empire, perhaps just to the north on Hadrian's Wall. This is essentially the life of a soldier in a nutshell. He can make as many plans for the future as he likes, but ultimately he serves at the whim of his master, the emperor.